Everything in sports is quantifiable. Analytics have never been more important to coaches, players, and even fans, but setting up the resources to acquire this data can be extremely expensive. Only the big clubs can afford the high-speed cameras and such that capture this information. Researchers from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign want to change that. And they've started by installing IoT devices, like low-cost sensors and radios, into sports equipment. Now, pro systems can cost up to a million dollars to implement and maintain. This IoT tech that they're using costs less than a hundred. The sensors use algorithms that can track movement to within a few centimeters. They can provide trajectory, orientation, and even revolutions per second. Players could soon check out stats on their accuracy and speed on their smartphones. The researchers, which started with a cricket ball, so room for improvement, are looking at new ways to charge the sensors. They think that they can harvest energy from the spin of the ball to power the sensor. All, you know, to figure out why that curve isn't breaking. Break it! Just hit! Get about the curveball, Ricky. Give him a heater. So I can hear myself echo! It sounds like Dimensions days are numbered. Last week, Stratasys introduced a new line of FDM machines, the F123 series. According to Tim Bowling, the Stratasys chief marketing officer, we're not in a one-size-fits-all era of the 3D printer anymore. Now, we're entering the era of specialization. According to the company, the global prototyping market is between 10 and $15 billion, and additive manufacturing only taps about 23% of that. With the new F123 series, the company is hoping to grab a larger piece of that pie. Stratasys launched the Dimension line of 3D printers, which includes the Fortis and Uprint brands in 2002. According to Stratasys President of the Americas, Rich Garrity, the F123 will put those printers out to pasture by printing 25% faster in ABS, PLA, ASA, and PCABS, starting at about two thirds of the price. What I found particularly interesting was just how quickly you can change out material. Any novice user can swap material in less than a minute and it's easy to set up. According to beta user Jesse Hahn, president of the Center for Advanced Design, it took his team less than 30 minutes from the time his new F370 hit the dock to start printing their first parts. What helps expedite setup is that it runs off 110. The company has 15 new patents pending for this system, which also features a new eject system with a flexible platform that makes it easier to remove printed parts. So you can toss out that old paint scraper that you're using to pry parts off the platform. It's also quieter than old machines, and with the high-end version, you can print in five thousandths of an inch in everything except PLA. Just need to get one of those into the office. Give her a bit of a test run. I just liked playing with that platform at this show. Just like, it's not breaking, but I thought it was gonna. So I can hear myself echo. This is Prosthesis, an 8,000 pound, 200 horsepower off-road mech. While you might have a few applications that immediately jump into your mind when you see this, like a weaponized version for the military or an industrial version for material handling, mechanical engineer Jonathan Tippett has another idea. He wants to race it. Tippett is the CEO and founder of Furion Robotics, the research initiative primarily run by volunteers that built prosthesis. Partially inspired by Burning Man, the annual pop art commune in the Nevada desert, Tippett set out to use engineering as an expressive medium with a focus on developing large-scale exobionic technology. He spent 10 years of his life, he's got about a half million dollars in materials, and in less than two months, he's gonna be at a helm for initial testing. Now you might remember Tippett from his work as the leg designer on the Mondo Spider. That was a 1500 pound, eight legged electromechanical walking vehicle that turned heads back in 2006. Who would have thought that a giant mechatronic spider would be nothing more than a smaller runt sibling 10 years later? Prosthesis was first introduced to the world at CES 2017, and I had a chance to see it firsthand at SolidWorks World 2017. You know, right before my appendix decided to nearly rupture and poison my insides. Tippett was at the event in Los Angeles because he quote, used SolidWorks to the gills for everything from motion analysis to finite element analysis and simulation. The prosthesis has hydraulically controlled arms and a proprietary control system that's all driven by a 96 volt, 200 horsepower electric powertrain. The pilot has a one-to-one -one haptic connection, but Tippett notes that it's adjustable to help with the learning curve. Apparently, piloting the mech looks like great fun, but it's a bit harder to learn than expected. Tippett actually said it's like riding a dinosaur, which 
I don't think is like a real comparison that you can make. My God, it was like riding a dinosaur. Instead of the military or other applications, Tippett wants to follow the motorsports model. And he's even working with some of the people behind the new drone racing phenomenon to make this mech racing league a reality. We'll wait and see how those tests go in a couple of months, but you can be sure that a racing league of massive lumbering mechs would catch on. I mean, I know that I'd watch. Hashtag Woodwatch, hashtag Mech Racing, hashtag Fury on Robotics. I'm David Manti. This is Engineering by Design.